shut up and sit down. Hi guys, it's Deutsch from Big Mac's Workshop and Paint Studio and today, continuing with our Guild Ball theme this month, we're going to be painting Avarice, Avaris, sorry. Um, we're not painting Greed today because uh, he would not fit on the video. And in keeping with uh, Andy's theme of super villains, we're actually going to paint Av Avarice as Two-Face. Which means by the time we're five minutes into this video, I will have probably used about 16 different paints already because of the two-tone colour on everything. And we started off with a uh, black primer as usual and we're going to use Xenophil Lighting so I'm going for a Wolf Grey by Game Air and just spraying directly down on top of it which then leaves all the shadows and all the black in the shaded areas. It can look a bit patchy but as we're going to layer it up those patches will disappear. Now we're going to work on some Warlord Purple by Game Air I really like the game air range recently. This is watered down considerably and what you'll see with the pre-highlight is that the highlights will show up at the top and the shading will blend in at the bottom. And once we're done with that we're going ahead to use a violet uh, game ink and we're going to spray the underneath of everything. Just like a wash but we're, we're putting it through the airbrush. That's going to um, add shading into all the areas but it's a very subtle shade it will also pull up ever so slightly like a wash does in those shade in the shaded areas and blend it together now we're going to go ahead and use the wolf grey again to re-highlight this um, hot spot on his shoulder that I wanted to do uh, that's just to bring more shade like make the shades more depth sorry give them more depth and bring up the colour at the top as well to make that purple even more vibrant as you can see, if you get the angle right, oh, you can see all the shades in between the creases of his sleeve. Then we're going to spray over those again with the wall of purple. All you got to do with this is get it at like a 45 degree angle. And as you can see there, you've got this really nice blend. Now this is a mask all by Humbrol, I think. Yeah, Humbrol. It's a, it's a silicone, so this brush will be absolutely useless by the time we're done. But what this does, it just, it's a layer of silicone. It doesn't tend to pull the paint off. And basically I'm going to cover half the model in this. So I can airbrush the other half without hitting any of it. If you're going to use that stuff, make sure you put it on several layers so it's nice and thick. As you can see, I've gone ahead and reprimed it black and gone back to using the Wolf Grey by uh, Game Air colour again and just redoing what we already did because obviously I don't want this side purple so we're going to have purple and dark colours on one side we're going to have white colours on the other side as a high contrast and once that's done I use the off white by model colour which is almost white but it's just not as vibrant it's more of like a cream colour but ever so, sli ever so slightly more white I thought this was a bit stark so I decided to wash that down with a bit of no oil watered down by Games Workshop. Or it could have been an Agraxo shade. I can't, honestly can't remember. They do the same job. Yeah, they almost do the same job. Um, there's going to be another layer of washes onto this anyway. Now we're using, definitely using no oil and blue shade by Game Colour Wash and the No Oil again is by Games Workshop. They're mixed together and watered down considerably because I only really want the shade in the recesses. Then we're going to go ahead and just re highlight a few areas with the Tusker Fur again. Nice thin misting over the top, that way you leave all your shading in the underneath. Take your time doing this because if you just blast that out your airbrush, then you know <clears throat> you're just going to get a huge white patch, and that's not what you want. You really want to learn to use the cone of the airbrush if you're new to airbrushing. You angle it just right and just hit things. That's absolutely fine. Now the bit I really enjoyed doing was pulling off the mask off. It, it um, you can finally see the result that we're going to get. That's Andy stealing my pen. As you can see, 
you can see there's a nice divide all the way through the middle. Um, my score comes off relatively easy anyway, but occasionally you'll get an odd bit that sticks. You pull it out of the cocktail stick. Now we're using Tuscoffer by GW. If you watch the Harry the Hat video, that's um, basically the same colour system. But well, we have to do two sets of flesh on here, so I started the other one with Demon Demonite High by Games Workshop. Demonette, you're a little bit gay. Is it? Yeah. Well, Demonette High, shut up, Andy. <laughs> Gotta keep my head. Yeah, I know, I will. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> then we're going to use Warp Fiend Grey to highlight the knuckles and the muscle textures. Then I'm going to switch back to the other side, and that's Tusk of Fur and Cadian Flesh Tone Mix. Like I said, you've seen me do this one before on Harry the Hat or on anything else that I paint flesh. Just adding little bits of Cadian Flesh Tone to Tusk of Fur so it's not too bright. Okay, then we started doing all the buttons on both sides in the Room Lord Brass. I was going to do them different colours on both sides, but we needed something to pull the rest of the model together. Then we start highlighting the face and other raised areas on the flesh for the left hand side with slanesh grey. And heavy brown was used, heavy brown extra opaque was used for the base ball back. I wish I'd used sandstone instead, it took a bit more time drawing lines down it for the wood effects but I had a few days to get these videos out as usual because we're pretty busy at the moment. Then uh, I watered down Drushi Violet onto all those purpley flesh, flesh tones. Then we're going to use Dryad Bark on all the leather straps. This is another bit of the model that we're using to pull the whole thing together. <clears throat> I know it's contrasting colours but there's got to be something there to pull both sides together. Now all the leather bits after that were then highlighted with Gortho Brown and I'm choosing to do the dry brush on the boots because whenever doing leather you'll find dry brushing tends to give a much better effect. Then I grab the shade because uh, obviously that looks rather dry and dusty now. That's not really what I'm going for so I'm going to blend those colours together even more with the I grab the shade wash. We're moving on to his inner shirt and for the left hand side we are doing Bale or brown as a base coat for his, for his shirt. If I'd had time, I probably would have gone ahead and put leather patterns and stuff on it, but there's, there's just never enough time to do what you want on these. And for the right hand side, we're using German grey model colour, which is a very, very dark grey. And for the leather on the other boot, because it's black, we're going to use. Um, Eschen grey with a dry brush. Doesn't matter if you go a bit too heavy on, on the dry brush on this, you can always use an oil oil to uh, bring those shades back. Then we're using a Reclam Flesh Shade by GW to go over the uh, actual flesh colours. And again, colour gunmetal was used for most of the metallic parts, all the buckles anything on the belts, anything on the harness. As you can see the two contrasting sides are starting to come together now. And the brass knuckle, what else are we going to paint that other than brass? So we use bright brass model air. Then of course that was washed later on with Agrax Fur Shade. This is Cadium Flesh Tone with a slight touch of Kizzler Flesh, both by GW. Whenever you're doing flesh, you've got to build those up in layers to make them look natural. Panzer Dark Grey was then used as a highlight on the right hand side of the inner shirt. And that's by Model Air. And to highlight the yellow side of his shirt, we use Avalon Sunset. Anywhere where the light would hit the most. Mm -hmm. 
then we're picking out more flesh bits with Slanesh Grey and Pale Grey Blue by Model Colour. And giving the shirt an agrax to the shade wash. Um, all the stitches, oh, sorry, this isn't the stitches, this is um, a light grey by Model Colour. And then highlighted over, I mean, sorry, shaded down with Nolan Oil. The straps on the baseball bat we decided to go with Sand Yellow by Model Air. Like I said, I wish I'd done that the other way around, but. would have got a better result. Then just watered down Kisler flesh on its own for the normal flesh sides. Any prominent features like the cheeks, uh, the nose, knuckles, really don't need much of that paint on there. It just creates a hot spot on those raised areas, makes them more three dimensional. Now the hair on the left hand side, we decided to go with uh, Wolf Grey. That would stand out quite a lot. It needed to be a bright grey contrast to the face. And then the other side, we used Panzer Dark Grey, and then we washed that down and re highlighted it up again. All the stitches were done in Terra Earth by Model Colour, then they were highlighted with Model Colour Khaki, which uh, makes them look more like lace, it's sort of a concoction that I usually use for ropes and such. You only really need to hit the uh, very top of those, those strings and laces, or thread or whatever you'd like to call it. Now we did a, some of the edge highlighting but we're running out of time on this video so quick rundown is basically we're just highlighting anything with the colour that it already had. So if I'm doing the boots that means it's a Gortho Brown as an edge highlight picking out the top areas and we just rinse and repeat that all over the place. I didn't see it necessary to show you all of the edge highlights. And after an oil wash and everything else this is what you end up with. Now, I'm quite chuffed with this one, it looks alright. Really, we'll probably put him on a more decorative base, seeing as we've got some lying around somewhere, I've just didn't have time to do it. And we start recasting. So, you guys let us know what you think. Uh, and we will do greed at some point, but if anyone's got a suggestion for a particular comic book villain we can have on his front, that would be useful. The only suggestion we've had so far is do Penguin. Uh, if I'd have thought about it, I wouldn't have done Harry the Hat as uh, the Riddler. I'd have done the Riddler on Two-Face as well, because that would have looked pretty cool. But, um, you know, I probably could still do that, a bit too late for that, but... We've got some more Gilmore videos coming up for you, so if you like this video, hit like. Um, share it with your friends on Facebook. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit subscribe because we're bringing out videos every week. And thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helped. Bye!